Reich government is determined, in view of the friendly relations which exist between Norway and Germany, under no circumstances to prejudice the inviolability and integrity of the Norwegian state. 2nd of September 1939, Deutsches Reich. But on 9 April 1940, German troops invaded Norway. the governments of Belgium, Holland and Luxembourg that Germany will not violate their neutrality. 6th of October 1939, Adolf Hitler. But on May 10th, 1940, German troops invaded Belgium, Holland and Luxembourg. firmly established, reliable relationship of Germany to Yugoslavia will represent an element of calm to our nerve-wrecked continent. This peace is the goal of all who are disposed to perform really constructive work. 1st of June, 1939, Adolf Hitler. But on 6 April, 1941, German troops invaded Yugoslavia. criminal methods of the Nazi conspirators brought them early success, and by 1941, they had most of Europe under their heel. Now an evil ambition for power and more power drove them on. But two of the world's mightiest nations, the United States and Soviet Russia, remained to block the Nazi drive for world supremacy. They had to be dealt with firmly, immediately. And now Germany asked for cooperation from her full partner in aggression to the east and from her junior partner to the south. In Berlin, they drew up the Axis Pact, the blueprint of the new order, and parceled out the continents of the world for Axis domination. Italy was to get the Mediterranean sphere. Japan was to get the Orient. And to Germany would go the rest of the world. In June 1941, in violation of their non-aggression pact, the Nazis sent the Wehrmacht deep into Soviet territory, according to military plans long made. As usual, there was no declaration of war. Hitler had said, today Germany, tomorrow the world, and this was tomorrow. Land warfare in the east, air warfare in the west. For now, defendant Goering's Luftwaffe was hurled with full force against the people and cities of Britain. 
Hitler, after all, had told the Reichstag, I will blot out their city. December 1941, the Japanese, keeping their end of an infamous bargain, struck at the United States, also without declaration of war. Japanese bombs rained on Pearl Harbor, spreading war finally to the Pacific. The new order was on the march. World War II flamed around the globe. In the name of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, General Rudenko presents counts three and four, charging that all the defendants committed war crimes in Germany and in all those countries occupied by Germany. The Nazi conspirators committed crimes against enemy armies, against prisoners of war, against the civilians of occupied land. They believed in the barbaric doctrine of total war and considered themselves freed from the restraints of international law or the established customs of war. Their ruthless policies were ordered in directives like this one from General Reinecke of the Wehrmacht High Command. The Bolshevist soldier has lost all claim to treatment as an honorable opponent. Active or passive resistance must be broken immediately by force of arms. Prisoners of war attempting to escape are to be fired on without previous challenge. No warning shot must be fired. More proof of this savage Nazi policy comes from the affidavit of Kurt Lindau, former Gestapo officer. There existed in the prisoner of war camps on the Eastern Front small screening teams headed by lower ranking members of the Gestapo. It was the duty of these teams to segregate the prisoners of war who were candidates for execution according to the orders that had been given and to report them to the office of the Gestapo. And a letter from Defendant Rosenberg to Defendant Keitel in 1942 stated clearly, a large part of the Soviet prisoners of war has starved or died because of the hazards of the weather. In many cases, prisoners of war could no longer keep up on the march because of hunger and exhaustion. In numerous camps, no shelter for the prisoners was provided at all. Even tools were not made available to dig holes or caves. Yet, when some objected that this treatment violated the Geneva Convention, Defendant Keitel answered with this memorandum. We are concerned with the destruction of an ideology. Therefore, I approve and back the measures. <laughs> 